So you weren't under house arrest anymore? No, I'm not under house arrest anymore. Is that, is that a president? You seem quite proud of that. <laughs> I am. I, who wants to, you know, I mean, it's a lovely place to be, but who wants to be there all the time? Is so, that yeah. a presidential pardon then, to get released? Or, or was that yeah, that was pitched to me, that um, the Powers Booth character, one of his last right. acts in office was to, uh, to let me. To let me he didn't go. do many good things whilst he was in office. No, he was, he? An, he was another mustache twirler, <laughs> wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes, I was let free, and um, I think... I don't think this is telling tales out of school. I think um, for a bit there, or at least uh, at the beginning, Charles is eager to come back because he misses being a player. Mm-hmm. He wants to be back in the game. Um, he w- uh, and uh, he wants to be a part of this, an acknowledged part of this, so that he... There's other things I could start to say, but I'll, maybe I'll no, just no, let the fine. show show those that's things. That's a great little yeah. teaser. Yeah. So, how would you compare working on 24 this year as opposed to in seasons six and five going back? Um, you know, obviously departure of people like John Cassar, well, John Cerno, different oh yeah. cast. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah, at first it was a little all at sea because so many of the people that I worked with are not, I mean, most of the people I worked with are gone. I'm trying to think if there's anybody. I mean, the crew's the same, and that's great because I really think that this. And I've said this before numerous times. That's part of what makes the show so great is the crew cares so much about the product and and the process. Not just cares, but like it's, it's like everybody's on a mission there, which is really exciting and makes things more, you know, vibrate more and and it just sharper and and etc. But it was hard because, well, for a number of reasons. When I came back, they quote, I quote that myself, they threw me into the deep end. They threw a lot of verbiage at me right away. So on this first bunch of scenes that I'm in, I do a lot of talking and most of the heavy lifting with the language. And, um, and you don't fart around, I almost used another word, you don't fart around on, on 24. If you don't show up to work ready, yeah. it's not a good thing. So, I knew I was going to be working with Miss Jerry Jones, which is an amazing thing, and I knew I was going to be back on 24, so uh, I was uh, filled with a certain amount of trepidation before I stepped on for the, for the go-back, and I miss some people. But I tell you what I say is the biggest thing is, it's different not being king. As Charles Logan, first of all, um, there was a lot of things I felt like I was on a mission in the early part of the season I kept trying to be as good as I could as the president no matter what they were having me do all my motives were were good and then once I turned out that I was bad I had to really shuffle and step back a couple of steps and then come back at it again and then find all the positive uh, uh, ways I could go after what everybody else thought was nefarious so I, I had to look at it in a positive light it was just busy I mean you know you're the whole thing is about what you think and who you are, and that when and Jeannie and I sort of, in a lot of ways, drove that season. Of course, of course, Kiefer, but I mean, you know, as far as off, uh, you know, off. The second story was definitely uh, Martha and, and Charles, and so. Yeah. So in that way, it's not the same, and and not being the king, like I said, not being the, the president is different because when I played the president. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was great. I mean, and nobody questioned me. You could do whatever you want. Really, you could. I remember some of the prep was nobody the prep for me before the, the cameras would roll. I would walk around. I would pace around saying, nobody knows what this is like to be. Nobody. I mean, as the president, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's it's a solitary job. And it was kind of fun inhabiting that. Now I'm a helpmate. And uh and that's kind of fun. I mean, it's turning out to be more fun than it was the first, right first up because I was nervous about things. And now I'm having fun again. So, another long answer. Yeah, good <laughs> Next answer. Next question. Yeah. So what was it like, um, you mentioned her briefly. Jerry? Yeah, what was it like working with Jerry Jackson? It was, it is. It, it, we ain't done yet. It is great. Um, she's so there. She plays. Uh, you throw the ball, she throws it back. Much like Gene Smart, only our relationship is so totally different, of course. Yeah. Um, she made it so easy to come on board because she was so excited to have me or my character show up to play with 
because she was she's a big fan of the show she had seen season five and all of that so she was very very laudatory upon my arrival and I came in early just to say hi to everybody and sort of get a little comfortable and she just was tickled tickled that I was going to be there and let me know it and and that's great I mean you know because actors you know you go into the, you go into the into the in the lists with somebody and you want somebody who plays the way you do or will like I said throw the ball back when you throw it to him and all those things and when I knew that she was happy to have me around that that freed me up to a certain degree so that's good yeah um, it's Obviously, you've got scenes with uh, Cherry Jones. Yep. Is there going to be any scenes or phone calls with someone like Kiefer Sutherland? I don't know. I can't imagine they won't have me <laughs> square off with him in some fashion. Um, but it hasn't happened yet. As a matter of fact, I've only seen Kiefer one day. Uh, we were both... He was <clears throat> in a, on a location, and, and I was going to do something there when he was done. So I saw him sort of in his exit mode, and we said, Hi, and how are you? Yeah. Um, I'm curious about that myself. <laughs> I'm just curious where Charles is going to come down uh, uh, near the end. If, if it's going to be some sort of... I can't imagine it'll be mano a mano because Kiefer will kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> but um, something, something. I don't know. It'll be interesting. And uh, you've been watching season eight on television? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Enjoying it? Yeah. I'm loving it. I love the uh, Annie stuff. Um, yeah. You know, the... the the uh, the mole in the in the in the Russian world that's really dark and mm. down and dirty and nasty and and, and it only gets more fun, folks. Yeah. So um, it's it's really good and it's shot really well. I first I first got a copy of because um, I wanted to know what happened, so I got a their you know raw copy sort of uh, an early um, um, compilation before the show and yeah. I thought huh hmm. but then I mean since now that it's you know performance ready now that it's on it's so clean and crisp and, and good and well shot and well acted so let's hope have you so. got a favorite new character or new actor to work with perhaps someone who maybe new actors a bit too personal but a new character in the show that you you know really enjoy well everybody that i work with is, is very interesting um what do i say well i already said i come in to work with a russian so there's a, a gentleman who's playing the head russian whose name is graham Oh, uh, it's a perfect Scottish name. McTavish! Come on, McTavish! <laughs> and he plays the Russian. And he's, he's great fun. I mean, you know, he gives as good as he gets. And uh, I have an assistant, of course, my executive assistant, is uh, a gentleman named Reed Diamond. And uh, what we get to do is shaping up to be very interesting. But really, it's Cherry and Graham and Reed. And have I talked to anybody? Oh, yeah, yeah. I... I, I um, no, that's that's it. That's the only people I talk to. I do take one person to task, but sort of like in a in a different way. I'm going to go into all of that. It's I let once again. I want to tell tales out of school. Too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we were actually in your office uh, yesterday. My little nook and cranny there. We yeah. Were, we were reading your paper to see what you were reading. Ah, yes, the um, New York Times <laughs> and the, yeah, the New York Revolution. What do you think of the new sets? Obviously, Joseph Hodges no longer there. Um, Carlos Barbosa has done him. Oh, I miss my uh, I miss my California uh, airy, my Logan's Retreat, as we called it. The the place that I lived during season five was just such a great place to crawl around and, and shoot in. I mean, that's one thing that's nice. They do design them so they can be shot in. That's the whole purpose. Um, I think it's rather sharp. Never having been to the real UN, I don't know, and I'm fairly sure that's an accurate, you know, rebuilding of the UN. Um, and I don't, I haven't yet gone to see to you, even though we're all in the same, same city, New York. Um, so, so far, it's interesting. There's a big New York skyline out my window, and, uh, yeah. and, and that's interesting. <laughs> nice view. Nice view. <laughs> and uh, it's Spartan, though. I mean, once again, you forget that it's, it's 24, so it's supposed to all take place in one day. So I get escorted into it, and it's not exactly up to my standards, uh, the character standards, uh, and and it continues unadorned because it was just a place to hang out and, and, and hatch plots, rather than get comfortable in. So. <laughs>